21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah, where's this? Yeah. Yeah. They're beating up a man? Well, who is? Yeah. Yeah. Well, which corner is it? You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. I'll send the officers right over there. Yeah, right away. Okay. Twenty first Precinct, transcribed. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. It had been a busy night in the precinct. Before I turned out the platoon at midnight, there was a three-alarm fire in a tenement on 78th Street, a pedestrian killed by an automobile on Park Avenue, an armed robbery of a delicatessen on 2nd Avenue, and the mugging by two youths of a hospital orderly as he walked from his work to the 77th Street station of the Lexington Avenue subway. Things quieted down after the late tour took over, however, and I was able to stay in the station house and clean up the paperwork, reading and signing reports and communications that normally I would have finished hours earlier. While I was so engaged, patrol of the precinct continued, and among those on the job were patrolman Paul Vaccaro as operator and William Coley as recorder in sector car number three. At 1.10 a.m., they were driving in a downtown direction on 2nd Avenue in the 70s. Well, I don't know about that. My wife and I looked at some of them out in Jamaica last week. The price hasn't gone up any. Hasn't gone up any since when? Since last Christmas. Are you kidding? No, I'm telling you. Would you look at the large ones? No, we couldn't get a large one in the house. A medium-sized one. Where's this place you look? Out in Jamaica there on the lot. I don't know. I can't find any bargains. Well, the fella told me there wasn't any shortage or anything like that. There's plenty of them around. Paul. Yeah, I see them. They're beating up a guy. Pull in. Well, let's go. Come on. Hold up there. Hold up. There they go. Come on, I'll see you later. There goes one in that doorway. I got him. Get the other guy. Hold up, you. Hold up. All right. You. Come out here. Come on out. Come on. Get out of my way. Come here, you. And let me go. Hold still. Let go. Get against there. Uh, let me loose. Go on. Get against there now. Uh, All right. All right. Now settle down. All right, okay. Pull your feet way out. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Pull your feet way out and lean against the wall. Well, I guess you mean? Feet out further. Come on. How far? Come on. Hey. That's it, like that. Hey, look, I want to tell you something. You've got plenty of time to tell me anything. Now, just hold still. I got nothing on me. I'm carrying nothing. I'll find out about that for myself. All right, now, stay there. It was his idea. It was all his idea. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You had to beat up an old man because it was his idea, huh? It was his idea. All right. Put your hands behind your back. I'm leaning with my hands. What do I hold on to? Lean on your head. Get those hands behind your back. Wait a minute. Oof. All right, now, straighten up. Hey, look, you got those things on awful tight. They're awful tight. They're going to stay on tight, too. Now, tell me something. How old are you, huh? Seventeen. Seventeen. That's all, just seventeen. Well, in seventeen years, you ought to have gotten some sense into your head. Now, come on. All right. Let's see if you kill that old man. I didn't mean to kill him. I didn't even want to hurt him. It was his idea. We just wanted to get some money. It was Ernie's idea. Doesn't make any difference whose idea it was. I didn't mean to hurt him. I didn't want to hurt him. Yeah, sure. You didn't mean to hurt that other guy tonight either, did you? What other guy? The one you mugged down 77th Street there near the subway station. How you know it was us that did it? Go on. Well, how'd you know? A little birdie told me. Hey, listen, you don't think he's dead, do you? I mean, I, I know he's old, but I didn't hit him so hard. And he kicked him. I only kicked him. I didn't. 
He doesn't look good, does he? All we wanted was a little money, that's all. Hey, listen, you got this on awful tight. That's too bad. Mister? Hey, mister. Uh, I'm all right. I think I'm all right. All right, just just don't try to move, that's all. I'm, I'm okay. I'm really okay. Look, you just stay here. We'll get an ambulance for you. No, no I, I want to go home. I just want to go home. Well, we better see if you're hurt first anyway. Hey, I'm sorry, mister. I'm awful sorry. I'm sorry, too. For you... I'm very sorry for you. All right, you you just sit here, mister. I'll try to move now. I'll send for the ambulance. All right. Come on, I think you. so. Oh, Paul, I made a hurts. Just walk to the car. What's your name, huh? Carl. Carl what? Carl Board. Yeah. 17 years old, huh? Yeah, 17, that's all. You think the other cop will get him? Any, I mean? Yeah, he'll get him. Climb in there. Sit on the seat. I didn't want to kick him. It was Ernie's idea to kick him. He said, kick him good, hit him hard. That'd make him lose his memory. For our faces, he might. All right. 681 to Central, K. 681, K. Car 681 at 2nd Avenue and 74th Street. We had a mug in here. We got one suspect. The victim is injured. Send an ambulance. K. Hey, that's pretty good how that works. You talk to them, they talk to you. Yeah, that's the idea. Hey, that's pretty good. That's like a telephone to the house, huh? Come on, Carl. Get out of there. All right, let's go. Over here to the man. Come on, let's go. He ain't gonna die, is he? He couldn't die if he's talking like that. He's talking like he's all right. What are you, what are you worried about him dying for, huh? Well, I wouldn't, except you caught me. It was only said kick him. I didn't say kick him. I was against it. How you feeling now, mister? I don't know. Better. Not so good. I don't know. I can't tell. I just hurt. Hurts inside here. That's where Ernie kicked him. You kicked, too. You kicked me, too. Well, uh, just, just a little bit, not as much as I did. You kicked me enough. I want to thank you, officer. You saved my life. They were going to kill me. They said they were going to kill me. We weren't going to kill you. We just wanted the money, that's all. Just the money. You wanted money, you should have asked. I'd have given it to you. I'd have given you all I had, a dollar twenty cents. You just asked me for the money, I'd have given you the dollar twenty cents. You all right? I don't know. I think so. Well, the ambulance is on the way. Hey, you think he got Ernie? Wouldn't be fair if he didn't get Ernie. Get me and not get Ernie. Look, don't worry about Ernie. We'll get him. Well, you bet it's not fair. He did the most. It was his idea. Uh, What's your name, mister? Sokin. Philip, now look, Sokin. Carl, don't move around so much. Well, things tight you got all Well, right. the more you move, the tighter they get. Now, just take it easy. Where do you live, Mr. Sokin? Around the corner, 387. My wife, my wife is there waiting. She won't know what happened look, to we'll, me. Look, we'll send somebody around to see No, I, I think I ought to see her myself. She'll get scared. She's sick. She's not a well woman. Well, look, huh? let, let's see how you are first. Then we'll wait until the ambulance gets here. All right. You think you ought to wait always? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> is that the ambulance? Is that it? No, I think it's another police car. Hey, where's that cop with Ernie? You ought to get Ernie. It's not fair me being caught in him now. We'll get him. Well, you're going to get him. Where is he? I don't see him. More policemen, eh? Is that who it is? Yeah, that's who it is, Mr. Sokin. Now, look, just lie back there now and take it easy, huh? What do you got, McCarroll? A mugging, Sergeant. Yeah, this boy here and another one jumped this man. They were killing me. A cop saw it just in time. Why not killing you? You keep quiet. Coley took off after the other boy while I grabbed this one here. Which way did he go? Well, I saw him turn a corner down there. Uh, hi. Yes, Sergeant? Go around the corner there. Coley was chasing a boy that way. Take a look for them. Yes, sir. How are you feeling, mister? You hurt very bad? I don't know. Not too bad, I guess. Hey, listen, couldn't you loosen this thing up a little bit? I mean, it's awful tight. You know, I'm not going to run away. I'm not going no place. I just want to make sure of that, Carl. I give my word of honor. Uh, I wouldn't try to sit up there. I, I think I'm all right. Well, we better wait and see what the ambulance doctor has to say. Just stay like that, huh? Okay, if you say so. Listen, I'm not going to no station house without Ernie. This was his whole idea. I don't want to go in there alone. We agree with you. You'll both go together. 
Well, don't look that way. Don't look like you're going to catch him. We'll catch him, all right. Uh, is that the ambulance, you think? Is that it? No, Dad. Sounds like another police car. You call the ambulance, didn't you? I call the ambulance, yeah. Oh, where is it? Well, it has to come all the way from the hospital. Oh, oh I see. What do you need all the cops for? Not to handle me. Hey, don't pull that thing, will you? You just sit still. It's Meister and Farrell, Sergeant. Don't get out here. Tony's chasing another boy around the corner on foot. Go take a look for him. Okay, Sergeant. Listen, my side's beginning to hurt a little bit more. Well, you just stay still and I'll see what the doctor has to say. Oh, it, it's beginning to hurt pretty bad. You, you don't think there's anything broken in there, do you? That's, that's right where he kicked me. I didn't kick you, not there. I didn't kick you in the side. Yes, you did. I never kicked anybody in the side in my life. I don't kick in the side. He told me he and the other fellow jumped that hospital early near the subway entrance, Sergeant. They were the ones, all right. Oh, they did, huh? All we want to do is get a little money off them. Just get a little money off them, that's all. Did you ever hear of working for your money? I heard of it, yeah. Hey, we should have heard something from Coley by now, Sarge. Maybe he chased him up into the building. Does your friend live around here? Who's that, Ernie? Yeah, Ernie. He's no friend of mine. Does he live around here? No, he don't live around here. He lives uptown. We both live uptown. Is there any place around the corner he might go? Any building he might duck into? No, not, not that I know of. How should I know where he might duck into? Does he have any friends around here? No, I don't think so. Not around here. What's the matter? Is somebody hurt? Did somebody get hurt? It's all right, lady. Everything's under control. Just move on, huh? Well, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Just go ahead. Move on. Oh, you'd think I asked for the world. All I wanted was a little information. Where were you going, Dad? Were you on your way home? Yes, yes, that's right. I was on my way home. Where'd you been? I, I was over to my brother's house for, for a pinochle game. What happened? I, I was just walking by. Somebody said, hey, wait a minute. It was them two. They came up and one of them grabbed me. The other one started hitting me. No, I grabbed him and I only hit him. They started cursing me. They wanted money. Who cursed you? Not me. Well, you knocked me down. You hit me. You kicked me. You got tough. You shouldn't have got tough. All right, all right, okay. Well, he got tough. Oh, uh, those things are too tight. Loosen them up a little well, bit, I'm will you? Them and they won't be so tight. I have to keep them so tight. I'm going to run away. Yeah, yeah, I know all about it. Sergeant. Yeah? All right. Keep your eye on him. Where is the ambulance? It'll be here. I'll be right back. It should have been here already. Yeah, hi. Did you see Coley? No, sir. He wasn't any place in the block there. Meister and Farrell came around. They're looking for him. I thought I'd better come back and tell you. No sign of him, huh? Well, we couldn't see him. It was a hack driver who had his car parked in the block there. He was waiting for a fare who was up in the building. He'd been there about ten minutes, he says, and he saw no sign of a police officer coming around the corner chasing a boy. Was he looking? Well, he was just sitting there in the cab, parked facing this way, just sitting there waiting. Said if a cop came around the corner chasing somebody, he'd have seen him. Just the cab driver in the block? Well, there was a man walking there, too. He uh, lived in one of the buildings. A young man or an old man? Fell about 40. He couldn't have been the other boy. He, uh, he said he was standing on the steps saying goodnight to someone he knew. He didn't see anybody come in the block, either. Vaccaro? Yes, sir? You said you saw Coley turn the corner after that boy into the block? Yes, sir, I saw him. Vaccaro saw him turn the corner. Oh, yes, sir, but where'd he go after that? That's what we'll have to find out. That boy he was chasing could have been armed. He might have turned on him. Might have. Yeah. Let's hope he didn't. You're listening to 21st Precinct, the factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. You hear your confession repeated over and over again, drummed into your head. They make you memorize it, sign it, and by torture and drugs, they finally get you so you yourself believe it. Then, finally, they put you on the witness stand, and you hear a voice admitting the guilt. You don't even care anymore. You hardly realize that it's your own voice, repeating the words they want you to say. Yes, that has happened in some countries. But there's a very good reason why it couldn't happen to you. Fifteen words in our Bill of Rights are your protection. They say very clearly... No person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. When we read about the rigged trials, the phony witnesses, the drugged confessions that take place in certain countries today, we're pretty glad that our Constitution was written by men of foresight. Well, maybe they couldn't look ahead to our day, 
but they were determined to protect us against such things happening in this country. For ourselves, for generations to come, this right exists, assuring us of fair trials, due process of law, and no one can compel us to be a witness against ourselves. It's right there in black and white, in words that have been unaltered for 165 years. It is one of our freedoms. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. In another few minutes, two detectives who were on patrol arrived on the scene. With Sergeant Waters and the patrolman already there, they began an intensive search of the neighborhood for patrolman Coley and the suspect he was chasing. Sergeant Waters rang in from a call box and apprised Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer of the situation, and requested that more help be sent. Lieutenant Gorman immediately informed me, and I instructed him to have a car come by the station house to take me to the scene. In the meantime, an ambulance had arrived from Metropolitan Hospital, and the mugging victim was taken there for treatment. When the car in which I was riding approached the scene, there were several uniformed officers and detectives gathered around Lieutenant King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad. Despite the lateness of the hour, a dozen or so curious civilians were also on the sidewalk. Okay, get on the job. Give him a hand here. And you two go on down to the other end of the block. Yes, sir. Hello, Captain. Sergeant, any word from Coley yet? No, sir. Looks like you might have chased the boy into one of those buildings on the block, Captain. We've got men out looking. We're getting ready for a building-by-building -building search. Good. We're going to start through the mall from the basement to the roof. Good. Where's the other boy? caro has got him in the car, Captain. I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. This way. Oh, and Matt, uh, when you're set, I want to go with you. Yes, sir. Okay, Sergeant. You three will go into the first building on the other side. They're the same ones that mugged the hospital orderly, Captain. Yes, I know. Hello, Vaccaro. Captain. Good work. Thank you. Only I wish we could locate Coley. We will. What's his name? Tell the captain your name. Carl. Carl Board. And you got yourself into some trouble, didn't you, Carl? Yeah, I guess so. What's your friend's name? Ernie. Ernie what? Ernie Van Teller. You know any place in the neighborhood that he might have gone? Listen, if I knew, I'd tell you. You think I want this all by myself? I don't want this all by myself. Where does Ernie live? Up near me there. Where's that? Up 113th Street. How old is he? You got a pretty complete description, Captain. Oh. Yeah, I gave it to him. I told him what he looks like. I don't want to take this all by myself. You catch him. I hope you catch him. He's 18 years old, 150 pounds, 5 feet 9 inches. He's got on a khaki field jacket, blue slacks, no hat or cap. Is he armed? Armed? No, he's got nothing. Except maybe a knife. I don't know. A switchblade knife? Yeah, I guess so. But don't you know? Yeah, switchblade. And he'll use it too, won't he? Well, I don't guess he carries it for decoration. I don't guess he does. We're all set, Captain. Oh, okay. Go on, you men get moving. Stay with your prisoner for Carol. Yes, sir. You go on All ahead. right. Get the men on the job, Sergeant. Yes, sir. All right, keep moving up there. Get on your toes. What do you think happened to him, Matt? Oh, in 20 minutes, he should have come back to the car or sent someone back, Captain. Or he should have rung into the station house. Yes, sir. You know, the boy had a switchblade knife. I know. There were two or three witnesses. Nobody saw them run through the block. My guess is that he chased the boy into one of those buildings, either up to the roof or down into the basement. And the boy might have jumped in with a knife. It's mm, a good possibility, Captain. And if he did, maybe the boy went home. Yes, sir. I sent two men up to where he lives to plant the place. Good. All right, get going. Start into those buildings. Start into those buildings. Okay, sir. There's three abandoned tenements that are going to be wrecked, Captain. We're going to try them first. Oh, well, it's a good idea. Then we'll try the occupied buildings. We'll search them all, top to bottom. If Coley went up into a dark hallway, that boy could have been waiting on a landing. One swipe with that knife would be all it'd take. Yes, sir. Captain. Captain Kennelly. Yeah, who is it? A Hearn. Over here, Captain, on the stoop. All right. Come on, lad. Here I am, Captain. Okay. Yes, sir, Hearn. Captain, this is Mrs. Protea. Captain Kennelly and Lieutenant King. How do you do? Mrs. Protea? She lives on the uh, top floor of this building. Top floor, fourth floor, fourth floor rear. Yes? She says she heard somebody on the roof a little while ago. First in the hall and then on the roof, running up the steps and then running up onto the roof. I heard them. Were they men? 
Yes, men, making lots of noise. How many? I don't know. It sounded like a lot. I was scared. I didn't move from the bed. I didn't know who it was. Robbers, I thought. And do you think one of them could have been a police officer? I didn't see. I only heard. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Get them to go straight to the roofs there and cut over this way. We think they went to the roofs. Yes, sir. How long ago was this, Miss Protea? I don't know. Ten minutes ago? Fifteen? I don't know. Somebody was running up the stairs yelling. They went on the roof. Then they ran around on the roof. I heard them. They were right over my head. Well, why didn't you call someone sooner? Well, I've got no phone. I had to get dressed to come downstairs. Mm, you waited a long time. Oh, yes, Sergeant. I was scared. Come on. Get out of the over here. Well, I, I want him to stay with us, Sergeant. We're going up to the roof this way. Okay, Captain. I stayed in the bed until the noises stopped and I got dressed. All right. You stay down here on the street, Mrs. Portillo. Sure, yes. Did you close the door to your apartment? I closed it. Locked it, yes. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, Arn. Yes, sir. Watch it now. Yes, sir. He's liable to have come back down the steps. You might be on any landing. Okay, Captain. Keep your light handy, Hearn. Yes, sir. Okay. These buildings are all the same height, Captain. Could have jumped from one roof to another. Yeah. Think we uh, ought to try the doors, Captain? No, not yet. Let's not wake up any more people than we have to. Okay, go on. Come on. It's on the top floor. Go on. Watch yourself, get sick. In the front, I think. Easy, easy. Take that side of the door, Ahern. Yes, sir. There. Police officers, did you just slam this door? Yes, I wanted to see what the excitement was. What is the trouble? I see all the policemen in the street. There's no trouble. Better bolt your door and stay inside, lady. All right. Okay, let's go to the roof. Yes, sir. I don't think that boy's around here anymore, Captain. Wherever he's going, he's on the way. Yeah, but where's Coley? Let's go. Go ahead. Post yourself right here, Ahern. Yes, sir. Right at the door. Keep it open. Yes, sir. Captain! Yes? There's a spiked iron fence between this roof and that one. He couldn't have gotten over this way. All right. Send your men downstairs and into the buildings toward the other end of the block. Yes, sir. All right, you men. Let's look that Go way, Captain. Okay. Watch it. Don't trip over that aerial wire. Yes, yeah, sir. Toward the back, huh, man? Okay. No. Not on this building. How about the one that way? I don't think the woman was hearing things, do you, Captain? I don't know. Now watch it going over. Copper flashing can rip into you. Yep. Beautiful night, isn't it? Oh, just a little bit cold, that's all. No, nothing back here. Let's try the front. You know, Matt, I think we Hold ought it. to... Someone behind that ventilator. Yeah? I think so. Saw so something move. All right. Let's have a look. Okay. All right, you. Raise up. Take it easy, Matt. Coley. Hmm? Coley. 
He's out, Captain. Coley. Uh, all right. Take it easy. You'll be okay. Uh, Ahern. You'll yeah, be all right, Coley. Cut. We found Coley. I'm all cut up. Go downstairs, ring in for an ambulance. I chased him up here. All right, Coley. Take it easy. Put your light on him, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm all right. I, I guess I just passed out for a little while. I'll be all right. It's awful sticky on my neck. Why does it blood? You were bleeding a little bit. It stuck me three times, if I remember. All right. You can tell us about it later. Well, I'm all right now. Chased him up here. About ten yards ahead of me all the way. I saw him... come out on the roof, and when I got over here, he was laying for me. Jumped me. Okay. Don't worry about it. Did you say which way he ran? Why? Well, went that way. Over the next roof, I think. I think I saw him go that way before I passed out. Yeah, this is on the way, Captain. Okay, good. Hi, hey, Sergeant. Holy, stay with him, Sergeant. We want to take a look over here. Yes, sir. Well, he ran this way, Captain. Over to the next roof. He didn't run over to the next roof, man. He jumped. Oh, that's some jump. Good ten feet across there. At least. Well, we know where he lives. We'll get him. Just hope Coley's going to be okay. Oh, I think he will, Matt. His passing out worries me, though. It's a bad sign. Not necessarily. Oh, looks more like a 12 or 14-foot jump, Captain. Matt. Yes, sir? Put your light down there in the courtyard. Sweep it around down there. Okay. Maybe you're right. Yeah. There he is. Well, Matt, I guess you don't have to look for him at home. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Well, who got bitten? How old? Four. Where's the dog? Is a dog there? Where? Oh. What's the name of the girl who was bitten? And so it goes, around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, transcribed. The factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. 21st Precinct has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.